Hello everyone, now our new topic is that protective clothing. So, in protective clothing we will discuss two aspects, one is extreme cold protective clothing and extreme heat protective clothing. So, today I will discuss the extreme cold protective clothing, here we will discuss different issues, what are the different layers in cold protective clothing, the material used, their application, their structures. So, all these aspects we will discuss here. If we see that the cold receptors in our body, so these are the receptors which receives the cold sensations. There are two types of receptors, one is cold receptor, another is hot receptor. So, their distribution in our body at different parts are different. So, their concentrations are different at chest, it is highest, it is expressed in terms of number per square centimeter and if we see, if we compare with the number of warm receptors, the number of cold receptors are much higher than number of cold receptors. Also, the depth of the cold receptor as compared to warm receptor, they are present in much shallow depth. So, the location of the cold receptors are typically between 0.15 to 0.17 millimeter from the upper layer of our skin and average depth of warm receptors are 0.3 to 0.6 millimeter. So, that is why we are more sensitive towards danger from cold receptors than heat receptors because of the higher number of receptors, higher concentration of receptors and shallower depth. So, there are situations where we feel thermal stress, this thermal stress may be due to extreme heat or due to extreme cold. During this thermal stress, we need protective clothing. So, when a person is exposed to extreme environment that is too hot or too cold, the threshold limit of our normal thermoregulation in our body reach quickly. So, that our normal thermoregulation system cannot perform due to this extreme condition, thus control over the thermoregulatory system in our body is lost. which results thermal distress. So, what happens during this thermal distress due to extreme cold is that in our environment it is extreme cold shown by this blue zone and our body core temperature it actually it falls rapidly. That situation is known as the thermal distress condition and this condition it is where we start liberating heat continuously from our body where heat loss is more than heat production and our body core temperature drops quickly and which may lead to a situation which is called hypothermia. So, what happens during this at a core temperature our body core temperature should be around 37 degree Celsius but it has been reported around 34 to 35 degree Celsius body core temperature due to extreme cold, the person becomes confused and shivering stops. So, just below 37 degree Celsius around say 36 degree, our body physiology due to that shivering starts which tries to generate extra heat but 34 to 35 degree Celsius of body core temperature, the shivering automatically stops, the extra heat generation mechanism is inactive. If the body core temperature drops further say at 30 degree Celsius, so a person becomes unconscious. So, heart stops beating at about 27 degree core temperature. So, if we want to 
get back from this unconsciousness or may be confused or shivering stages, we may rewarm proper rewarming is needed. So, to prevent all this condition, we need clothing for protecting ourselves from extreme cold, because our internal physiological condition is not able to cope up all this situation. So, what are the effects of unusual uh, climate? The effects of exposure to cold, if we do not wear sufficient clothing, initially due to body physiology, vasoconstriction takes place, where it restricts blood flow to retain heat within our body, muscle tone which is tensioning the muscle and then shivering starts. So, to avoid all this unusual climate and to protect us, we need proper well designed extreme cold climate clothing and most of the extreme cold climate clothing are not single layer, they are multi layered clothing. So, if we use multi layer clothing, so we may overcome all these problems. So, these are the functional requirement, there are typically three layers, outer layer, middle layer and inner layer. I will discuss in detail the functions of each and individual layer. So, these layers are required to minimize the to thermal transmission that is to maximize the insulation, we want to have higher insulation by blocking the heat transfer by radiation. So, we should prevent the heat to come out from our body by radiation and minimize the convective heat loss. Along with this heat uh, control of heat transmission, so during all this uh, development, we must take into account that the moisture vapor transmission through this structure should be enough, otherwise there will be condensation problem and freezing problem will be there within the structure and all this may affect the thermal insulation characteristics of clothing. And if we try to prevent the moisture vapor to pass through the clothing ensemble. So, basically the moisture it should allow the moisture vapor to flow freely through the body at the same time it should prevent the heat to come out. So, that is why that the moisture vapor pressure build up should not be there. Before going into detail of different layers, we must first understand the parameters thermal transmission parameters through which we will express the insulation characteristics. There are generally three parameters related to extreme cold protective clothing. These are mate, clow and tog. They are most commonly used parameters. The mate is the term which has nothing to do with the clothing. It is basically our metabolic heat we are developing, we are generating this metabolic heat. That mate is the measure of our metabolic heat. It is used to quantify the metabolism of a man resting in a sitting position under the condition of thermal comfort. That is the definition of mate. So, the table shows the different activities. At different activity, we generate different level of metabolic heat. As we increase our activity, our metabolic heat generation will be more and more and we may feel warm and at that time, we have to release the heat at higher rate. So, at steady state condition, from the table we can see it is around 55 to 65 watt per square meter heat we generate metabolic heat. But as per definition of mate, one mate is 50 kilocalorie per square meter hour which is equal to 58.2 watt per square meter approximately. So, in seated quiet 
person will generate heat in this range. So, that is why the mate is defined as 50 kilocalorie per square meter that is the one mate and which has nothing to do with the clothing. But this mate value is used to develop other insulation characteristics, clothing insulation characteristics. The other characteristics are clo and tog. This clo value is very widely used for clothing insulation measurement, particularly for extreme cold climate clothing. Clo is a measure of the clothing insulation. By clo, we try to measure the insulation of total clothing. It is not the fabric in isolation. So, what is clo? Clo is defined as the insulation of a clothing system. This clothing system includes total clothing, top, bottom, gloves, everything taken together that requires to maintain a sitting resting average male comfortable in a normally ventilated room. As I have mentioned that mate means the metabolic heat which is generated by a person in normal sitting resting position. So, for that person whatever heat he is generating if the clothing is able to transfer that heat to the environment that clothing insulation is known as one clo. And the definition of ventilated room is that where the speed is speed of air is 1 meter per second, the air temperature is 21 degree Celsius and relative humidity is 50 percent or less. Now, to derive clo from basic definition, the assumptions are that 24 percent of metabolic heat is lost through evaporation from the skin and respiration. So, through respiration and evaporation from the skin which is actually away from the clothed portion. So, where clothing is not coming into picture. So, that 24 percent and what we have seen one mate is 50 kilocalorie per square meter hour. So, it is 24 percent of one mate value that is coming out to be 12 kilocalorie per square meter hour is lost through evaporation and respiration. And remaining 38 kilocalorie per square meter hour that is 50 minus 12 is transmitted through clothing. So, that is the insulation of the clothing we require. So, 38 should be transmitted. Now, from the literature we can get that mean skin temperature that condition means at the ventilated room is 30 degree Celsius, 33 degree Celsius. Therefore, the total insulation of clothing plus air, the ambient air layer it is given by 33 minus 21 by 38. That means, this is the temperature difference and that is the insulation required. Okay. So, that is the conductivity that must trans heat transmission is required 38. So, it is coming out to be 32 square meter degree Celsius hour per kilo calorie. So, 0 0.32. So, 0 0.32 is the insulation total insulation of clothing plus ambient air and air insulation is known to be 0 0.14 and if we consider the air and clothing they are in series that means they are in additive in nature. So, we can get insulation of clothing that is 0 0.32 minus 0 0.14 equal to 0 0.18. So, that is the clothing insulation and that is equivalent to 1 clo. So, 1 clo is the unit is defined as 0 0.18 square meter degree Celsius hour per kilo calorie and if we convert into this wattage. So, that is a 0 0.155 square meter degree Celsius per watt. So, that is the conversion here the relationship 1 kilo 
calorie per hour equal to 1.163 watt. So, from there we get the relationship 1 kilo is equal to 0.155 square meter degree Celsius per watt. Another parameter for clothing insulation is that the torque. Torque is also a unit of thermal resistance of clothing. Here we use torque for clothing insulation, but torque we can also calculate from the instrument which is defined as the thermal resistance that is able to maintain a temperature gradient of 0 0.1 degree Celsius with a heat flux of 1 watt per square meter. That is for 1 degree temperature gradient the heat flux will be 10 watt per square centimeter. The reciprocal of heat flux is torque. So, 1 torque will be 1 by 10 square meter degree Celsius per watt which is in SI unit. So, from there we can get the relationship between clo and torque which is 1 clo equal to 1.55 torque. So, that is the relation. So, we can convert torque to clo, clo to torque by this relationship. Now, this diagram shows required insulation and how to select clothing for particular extreme cold condition. So, we must understand the cold stress index. So, this I R E Q that means insulation required it is a cold stress index. This figure shows the I R E Q values for low physiological strain that is neutral thermal sensation and at different activity level. Now, from this diagram let us see a person at 0 degree Celsius temperature environment if he is sitting idle resting how much insulation of clothing he requires if it is he is sitting at 0 degree Celsius sitting idle he would require a total clo value of clothing of around 4 clo. So, he require total clothing systems clo value of 4 higher clo value means higher insulation required thick clothing he require, but at 0 degree Celsius if he if he starts working. So, he, if he is say working very hard in that case he would require a very light clothing may be 0.5 clo is required. On the other end similarly, if we keep on reducing the temperature. So, at say minus 40 degree Celsius if the person works hard very hard work so still he require clothing of 2 clo. So, at different temperature if we reduce the temperature then we require higher clo value in our clothing. So, we need to have clothing of different clo, but for certain temperature say minus 40 degree Celsius if we increase our activity level we may reduce we may need lower clo value. So, we may need lighter weight fabric with lower clo value. So, to decide the comfort sensation at different temperature only the clothing selection is not enough we must know the activity level average activity level. Otherwise suppose for minus 20 degree Celsius we have designed clothing for resting person say for that if we use this diagram we will select clothing of around say 6.5 clo, but effectively if the person is not resting if he is working hard in that case he actually require a clothing of say 2 to 3 clo, but he has been provided clothing of say 6 to 7 clo in that case he will feel warm. So, that will not serve his purpose he will be uncomfortable he is 
unnecessarily carrying higher load. So, that we have to take into consideration. So, these are the steps here it is showing how to calculate the IRUQ value, how to select the IRUQ value and which is known as cold stress index. So, how to use this IRUQ value? First determination of IRUQ for a given exposure condition as I have mentioned going back to earlier graph. Suppose a person will be working under minus 30 degree Celsius condition environmental condition and he is supposed to work moderate work. So, from this diagram we can decide what will be his insulation required. So, here say if he is doing moderate we can select. So, 3 as the insulation requirement IREQ 3. So, we have determined comparison of IREQ with the protective level provided by the clothing. So, we will select the clothing protective value by in the term of TOG and accordingly we can use. There are two levels of strain correspond to the low level or neutral or therm, uh, neutral or comfort sensation and another is a high level that is slightly cold or cold sensation. So, this are the two levels here you can see in this diagram the two levels are there here it is a normal and it is a little bit cold sensation will be there. This table shows basically rough idea about the clo value of the total clothing system. So, if a person wears briefs, short sleeve shirt, trouser, okay, socks, shoe. So, his total ensemble will have insulation of 0.5 clo. So, accordingly if we keep on changing our clothing, so we can control the clo value. So, these are the different combinations we can use a sleeping bag we can have clo value between 3 to 8. So, which is used for extreme cold climate clothing these are the range. So, the clo value is the relative measure of ability of insulation to provide warmth. So, that is important lowest clo value of a nude person is which is obviously 0 there is no clothing and highest clo value of say 5 is that Eskimo clothing which is comprises of fur, pant, coat, hood, gloves. If we take together all this, so we may achieve 5 clo value. So, average winter clothing is around 1 clo and summer clothing clo of 0.6. So, after understanding the parameters, now we will discuss the different layers used in extreme cold climate clothing. The layers as I have already mentioned the layers are three layers inner layer, middle layer and outer layer. The outer layer which is also known as shell layer, the shell layers main function is to protect the person from wind and water or snow. So, it should be breathable, water impermeable normally we use outer layer with a oven structure which is very thin oven structure is used because its main function is not insulation. So, here its function is basically wind and water blocking, but at the same time it should be breathable. The middle layer which is also known as the insulation layer here main function is that it should be thermal resistant. So, thermal resistance is the basic characteristics required in the insulation layer. And another important characteristics is that it should be resilient like after compression it should retain its original position otherwise what will happen it is whatever the air entrapment is there in the structure this will be lost and this will lose its insulation. And for that here we use high bulk Norwegian fabric are used here and base layer the inner layer they have their function basically skin comfort, moisture vapor transmission, it should be typically hydrophobic in nature because hydrophilic fiber like cotton once absorb moisture or water 
a tries to cling to our body. So, that becomes uncomfortable and we use knitted fabric for the reason the structure is not that smooth and it forms the comfort layer due to the loop structure. You know, this diagram shows this is the body core with a temperature 37 degree Celsius is required. This is the inner layer, next is middle layer and third one is outer layer. So, as I have already mentioned it is a moisture transfer, skin comfort, hydrophobic and knitted structure. This is the inner layer, middle layer thermal resistance basically thermal resistance layer it is there and here it is a wind and water resistance and it should be breathable. So, in doing the water proofing or water resistance it should not the block all the pores. So, that type of coating should be there. The material characteristics which affect the thermal resistance are fiber cross sectional shape. So, we may change the cross sectional shape or cross sectional size like uh, microfiber or uh, coarse fiber that controls the air entrapment. If we use the hollow fiber or use the coarse fiber, so then we can increase the air entrapment. Then yarn porosity or yarn manufacturing method controls the air entrapment. If we use say hollow yarn or use a textured yarn, so we can enhance the air entrapment. Fabric porosity is also important. So, porous structure of non oven increases the steel air entrapment and hence it affects the thermal resistance and we can select fiber with lower thermal conductivity. So, all these material characteristics are important for steel air entrapment basically that the for insulation we require two aspects. One is to control the conductive heat or convective heat and at the same time we have to control the radiative heat. So, radiative heat we can control by controlling the fiber diameter, fiber fineness and emissivity of the material used. Apart from this moisture content of material is also important for controlling the thermal resistance. Higher moisture content means higher thermal transmission. So, thermal resistance will reduce. So, we must use a fiber with lower moisture content or moisture regain to have better thermal resistance. So, this is the comparison between the conductivity of different materials. So, air conductivity is 0 0.0, 0 0.025, fiber general conductivity is 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, water conductivity 0 0.6 and ice the conductivity is 2.4. So, if you see within the fibrous structure if the air is being replaced by water or moisture then we will lose our thermal resistance due to higher conductivity of water. So, to select the material for extreme cold climate clothing there are three different stages the fibers what we can select the type of fiber we should take into consideration fiber surface properties cross sectional shape whether it is a round hollow or profiled and diameter of fiber. So, we have to take all these things into account. So, fiber type means whether we should go for natural fiber or synthetic fiber. If synthetic then what type of fibers we require those we have to take into consideration. After fiber then if we use oven fabric or knitted fabric then yarn selection is important that whether we should go for the ring span yarn or rotor span yarn or drape span yarn. So, that we have to decide what count of yarn whether we should go for coarser yarn or finer yarn type of twist we require or packing coefficient. So, depending on our application we have to decide all this yarn related parameter and fabric related parameters are basically that a different layer base layer, middle layer or outer layer we have to select which fabric we should use either oven, knitted, non oven, what will be the porosity, 
what are the surface properties. So, these are the different properties, what is will be the thickness, what will be the mass per unit area of fabric, all these characteristics we have to take into consideration while selecting the fabric. Now, we will discuss the construction and requirements of different layers. We will start with the inner layer. So, inner layer as we have seen it is basically it is close to the skin, always it is in contact with the skin. So, being on the skin it controls the microclimate temperature and humidity. So, microclimate means the climate the environment between the clothing and our skin. So, to control the microclimate we must decide the inner layer properly. Although its function primary function is not insulation with low activity there the layer must reduce air movement and with high activity heat and moisture should be transported from the layer to cool the skin. That is at the high activity we generate moisture, we generate sweat. So, this the main function of the inner layer is that it should immediately transport the moisture and heat which has been generated in the body out uh, from the skin. The fabric should not retain moisture as it would increase the conductivity. So, the inner layers function is to transmit the moisture immediately from our skin. The fibers which are used we will discuss now. Apparently, it looks that cotton is very comfortable fiber, but for extreme cold climate clothing we should avoid cotton. It is only acceptable where the activity is low that means, perspiration level is low, but otherwise at higher level of activity when it gets wet the cotton's characteristics is that it clings to the body. As the cotton after absorbing moisture gets wet it reduces the thermal insulation of the structure. In hot climate cotton with high thermal absorptivity is perceived to be pleasant, but in cold it is opposite. So, in hot climate we can use cotton because of the higher thermal absorptivity it absorbs heat, but as I have already discussed that in cold we should not use cotton because due to higher thermal absorptivity it will take unnecessary extra heat from the body and that will make us uncomfortably cold. The synthetic fiber we can use at the base layer because synthetic mainly the hydrophobic synthetic they remove water that is remove sweat at faster rate sometime wool wool polyester blends are also used. It is not only the fiber selection in the base layer, but the construction of the fabric is important. Construction should be such that it facilitate removal of sweat by differential capillary pressure. So, the sweat which has been generated it should not be only absorbed by the fiber, but through the capillary action it should be removed from the skin. These are the comparison of different fibers in the base layer. If we use wool or wool blend it is it poses high absorbing capacity and can handle small amount of moisture without losing the insulation property. The cool wool's main advantage is that once it absorbs moisture it releases heat ok. That is why it is insulation of the clothing is not compromised. It can be next to the skin fabric skin and can keep skin dry, but on the other hand in case of cotton it absorb moisture, but clings to the skin when wet and therefore, should not be too close to the skin in cold environment. So, in cold environment we must avoid cotton as inner layer, but synthetic fibers are hydrophobic in general and moist air can move from skin through the fabric to the next layer. That is why due to hydrophobic nature due to wicking action the moist air can move freely or quickly through this fabric layer. The screen microclimate quickly becomes humid during sweating this humidity is uncomfortable. So, if we cannot maintain the wicking property then the problem would be that this synthetic fibers are hydrophobic in nature they do not absorb and at that same time 
if they cannot wick then screen microclimate will be quickly humid and become uncomfortable. So, we have to decide the fiber as well as the structure of fabric for inner layer. So, inner or base layer should be textured basically that layer should not be smooth they should be textured or we can have higher hairiness in that inner layer to attract liquid moisture from skin and wick it away. So, textured this uh, surface is used hydrophilic finish on polyester or polypropylene sometime is recommended and this would initiate moisture attraction due to hydrophilic finish and due to the hydrophobic nature of this fibers they allow the moisture to be transported by wicking action. So, these are the different ways to improve the wicking characteristics of the inner layer. The next layer is that insulating middle layer. The function here is the basic function is the insulation it to provide insulation of the clothing system mainly here the construction is oven non oven fabric with high thermal resistance it should be light enough because it is a thicker and porous layer. So, it should be lighter non oven can be used in non oven basically majority of the volume is occupied by air. So, that is why that steel air provide thermal resistance and it provides lighter weight cloth. So, due to the steel air present fiber should be selected so that they can entrap more air and resist radiative heat loss which is very important. We should select fiber which will reflect radiative heat to come back from our body to our body. So, it should not allow the radiative heat to come out from our body at higher rate. So, insulation in terms of conduction is important and also at extreme cold climate we should prevent the radiative heat loss from our body as we know that majority of heat loss is through radiation. So, the middle layer provides insulation it comprises of one or several garments of thicker material. So, we can have uh, different garments in the middle layer it should be non absorbing material because with the long exposure it should not get wet and it should be dry because the drying opportunity is less because we have to wear use this layer as it is inside. So, the drying opportunity will not be there. So, we should use non absorbing fiber. So, any textile can be chosen as long as it gives insulation. So, different textile structures can be chosen here the construction of middle layer the construction principles are textile we can use in middle layer or duvet type we can use and textile needs pile fleece non oven we can use and duvet type it is basically by filling we can use the down feather or different types of filling we can use in the middle layer basically to reduce the weight and increase the insulation. So, for extreme cold this duvet type layer is preferable. So, this will give us warmth. Now, to increase the insulation in the middle layer different fiber cross sectional shape and fibers with uh, cream can be used because the creamed fiber entrap more air we can use hollow fiber wool uh, natural fiber with uh, natural cream present it can entrap more air microfiber polyolefin microfibers are used for uh, basically insulation it actually prevent the radiative heat to come out down feather in the as a filling material we can use reflective materials are also used for extreme cold climate clothing aluminized fabric are or aluminized fibers are used which actually reflect the radiative heat it does not allow the radiative heat to come out from the body. So, clothes we have discussed typically clothes is can be related with the thickness of 
material this is the uh, empirical equation 1.6 multiplied by typical fabric thickness in centimeter that gives one um, the clo value that means if we can create a fabric of 1 centimeter thickness we will get a clo of that system 1.6 clo so we can increase the insulation by increasing the fabric thickness but at the same time if we only increase the thickness to increase the clo at the same time what will happen it will reduce the vapor pressure it will reduce the vapor transmission that means it will increase the vapor pressure that will ultimately affect the clothing comfort behavior so typical thermal insulation it's a shutting 0.1 underwear 0.2 to 0.4 in this way so blanket 1 to 2 okay these are the uh, different uh, continental quilts 7 to 14 so these are the different uh, tog values heat produced rate and insulation value for various activities we have also seen earlier in sleeping heat flow heat uh, production is 80 required insulation is 2 and clothing thickness required is 8 so that way we can uh, design our clothing when a person standing he needs a clothing of thickness 3.6 where his heat production is 1 uh, 75 a person when is walking he is producing heat 250 to 450 in that case he may require clothing with a thickness of say typically one, 2 to 1 to 2 basically 1.4 to 2.6 centimeter thickness here these conditions are at temperature of minus 40 degree celsius so at minus 40 degree celsius if we want to design uh, clothing that is an extreme cold climate. So, for different activity we have to design clothing with this guidelines. Coming to the outer layer, the outer layer as I have already mentioned it provides protection against environment factors such as wind, rain, fire, tear, abrasion. These are the different conditions where these factors from which this outer layer protect us it sometime it may be against chemical or physical agent like some puncture some other things we should it should protect this layer sometime can add to the total insulation of the clothing the outer layer should be waterproof the stitches the seams should be sealed properly because if the fabric is waterproof and the water penetrates through the seams that will not work basically. So, seams should be in outer layer seams should be sealed for windproofing air permeability of the fabric for outer layer should be less than 5 liter per square meter per second and if we can create fabric layer of that that will automatically be water repellent. So, that this is the condition we need for the outer layer and it is not that to reduce the wind flow that is to make the it wind proof we should not seal all the pore it should be porous. So, it should allow the sweat in vapor form to come out from the body. So, it should be vapor permeable that is breathable. So, if the evaporative resistance, so waterproof is achieved by applying coating or by laminating. So, waterproof breathable coating may be applied. So, if the evaporative resistance is 0 to 6, then it is a very good, and if it is resistance is more, then that total ensemble will be uncomfortable because the accumulation of moisture vapor will be there. So, what are the fabrics used in outer layer? It should be light. So, typically nylon filament, lightweight uh, filament oven fabrics are used, finely oven windproof cotton fabrics sometimes used, but they should be coated 
polyester microfiber fabrics are used, windproof, waterproof, water vapor permeable laminate should be applied on this fabrics. Now, we will discuss one experimental condition where the thermal transmission was evaluated at different convective mode. So, this we will discuss in the next class. So, till then thank you.